We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Lekitatu village in Meru district in Arusha, Tanzania. And we're here to meet a farmer who has problems with her shamba. Well, let's go and meet her. Walking through the beautiful rice paddles, we went to meet the 43-year-old Lillian Enoch. She lives on this one and a half acre shamba tucked away in the Kitatu village in Usa River, Arusha district. The main farming activity here is rice production. She lives here with her children and husband, but they have so many problems with their shamba. We decided to come and see if we could help them. I keep dairy cows, dairy goats, I've got a fish pond. I have rabbits, I grow rice and maize. My challenges are many, both on livestock and crops. On chicken, Newcastle is my biggest problem. They also get chicken pox when they are three weeks old. On rice, I think my soil is very salty. If I get an expert, I would really be happy. I educate my children through farming. If I don't plant and I don't keep animals, my aim of being on top will not be achieved. I want to be on top with success as tall as Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow, Lillian is a very hard-working farmer. She's got cows, she's got goats, chickens, ducks, you name it. She grows rice and maize. <laughs> but she has problems. Now, the Newcastle disease has affected many of our chickens which have died. Then the soil acidity is also affecting the rice. So we are here to help. Yes, Shamba Shepap is here and together with experts, we'll make sure that she's truly shaped up. So we set up our base tent and got down to business. Rice is Lillian's main crop and she has had problems with her harvest in the past. We have invited an extension officer from the ministry to give us some tips. Early you walked around the rice field. What are your observations? To say the truth, the rice paddy has done well. But there are some small technical problems that I have noticed. One is the inadequate use of fertilizers. And rice needs a lot of fertilizers. The first one is phosphate that we get from uh, DAP, which helps with good rooting. And as we know very well, good developed roots in the soil will help the plant get enough nutrients from the soil, enable it to feed well and to get better yields. But nitrogen is also good for developing leaves as leaves helps the plants to make its own food and also its yields. If you look at these two plants, this one here is having enough husks or ponds. This is because phosphate has helped it make enough grains. But if these fertilizers are insufficient, you will see something like this. It has nothing, not even one pond. Even if you touch it, there are no grains. This is a sign that fertilizer with the required phosphate and nitrogen was not sufficient. We normally advise rice farmers that they need to use fertilizers three times. There is a planting fertilizer, the DAP, which has 46% phosphate. But after 14 days, you are supposed to add urea which will help the crop develop even better. And after 54 days when the crop is beginning to produce the husks and the ponds, you add more fertilizers for better yields. 
So if a farmer fails to use the recommended fertilizer per acre, then we shall witness what we are seeing here, where some crops in some areas are having lots of husks and pawns and grains, but in some areas where the fertilizer was not enough, you'll find crops that have nothing. So Lillian, how many bags of rice do you harvest per acre? From one acre, I'm hoping for 25 bags. One acre. Is that okay? Mm, well, that is not good. In one acre, she should expect between 35 to 40 bags. Where a farmer has observed the good farming practice, which includes good farm inputs, like prepare the farm well, observing recommended spacing, for example, from crop to from one crop to another crop should be 20 to 25 centimeters. And also good weeding, as weeds will only take up the same nutrients from the soil needed by the crops. So um, if you let weeds continue competing with the crops for nutrients intended to benefit the crops, then your crops will not do well. Getting rid of all the weeds and keeping your farm clean is important. Also remember, some of the weeds will harbor insects, pests and diseases. So we are advising farmers to weed well and remove all the unwanted plants and throw them far away to avoid your crops being attacked by pests and diseases. All you have to do is before you plant your rice, you need to get in touch with the soil experts to come and collect some samples and to go and test in the lab. Since different crops need different pH. So, now we advise that before the next season, get in touch with a soil expert to come and collect some soil samples and take it to the lab for testing. You see, when the expert comes back, he'll come back with a report. And he will also give you some more advice on what kind of fertilizer to use since there are many different types of fertilizers. He will also direct you to one that can increase your yields so that you can get better results than you are getting now. To plant rice, first of all, level the paddy. Then, mark the places where you will plant the seedlings. There should be 25 centimeters between each part in all directions. Make sure you plant the seedlings within 30 minutes of taking it out of the nursery so it does not dry out or die. Usually, farmers throw fertilizer over the crops or broadcasting. This wastes a lot of fertilizer and money. A cheaper and more effective way of it is place the urea fertilizer into the soil near the plant. This slowly spreads through the soil to feed all the other plants around it. This method is not only to save money, but also increase your yields by 20%. Remember, for a good rice crop, you need first to get your soil tested, plant the right variety using the correct spacing, and use the correct fertilizer. This will help you get the recommended 35 to 40 bags of rice per acre. With the changing weather, it's becoming difficult to plan when to plant or harvest crops. So, you need to make your farm as strong as possible to help you work through the tough times. Eliud has told us that Lillian's soil needs improving. So, we've got an expert to tell us how we can do that. Mr. Rama, you've walked around and we've worked with you and you've seen some things. But what is your general observation of what you've seen so far? From what I have noticed, there are two very important things. The soil fertility seems to be low. The kind of compost or manure she is using needs to be improved a bit. If you take a look at this uh, compost or manure, it is mainly composed of crop leftovers and the cow dung is very little. This ratio is not right and uh, can fail to bring the desired results. 
Those are the two things I have noted. Yes. And so what should Lillian do? Oh, well, it is my opinion that um, this manure should have been given more time to rot and uh, mature well before being taken to the farm. As it is now, it is just like you have mulched your farm. To make good manure for your shamba, collect all the farmyard manure from your animals once a week. Put the manure in a shaded place and allow it to rot. Turn the manure every month. Add fresh manure to one end of the pile so you can start using the one from the side progressively. Mr. Rama, how do you see her rice? The rice crop is not bad, but it can be improved. And that can be as a result of two things. This manure is not sufficient for the crops, and the type of fertilizer she is using is not providing the right nutrients that is needed by the crops here. If you use this kind of manure, most of the nitrogen, it will just be used to help this crop leftovers rot, and it will be of no use to the current crops you have grown. And this will just be a problem for some time. We need to remove the manure and keep it aside and probably use it in the next season when it is mature enough so that it can help the other crops, but not these current crops. At the moment, it has not attained the right quality to help these current crops. Expert, kindly, how can I know that my soil has a problem and is not fertile and not good for my crops? The easy way at a farmer's level is to just take a keen look at the appearance of your crops. If you look at your farm, this area here, you will see that the crops are very healthy. And uh, if you take a look at the other area, well, uh, the crops are a bit weak. Now this difference should tell you that the soil is not the same in nutrient content. That is just one way. And it just gives you an overall picture and you will know which sections to pay more attention on and to improve. Once you see that, you can now determine which areas to take samples for testing. So as an expert, I would advise you to collect samples and take them to the lab for testing. Judging from the advice of both experts, I think the first thing we need to do is to have the soil tested. There you are, Naomi. Yes, where are you going? Where are you going? Where to collect soil samples, you? Ah, I'm going to do the same. Okay, let's go together. Good. Okay. We asked our good friends from Soil Cares to come and help us collect the soil sample and do the soil test. To collect a good soil sample, dig a hole one foot deep in your shamba with a panga. Take out a handful of soil from the middle of the hole. Put the soil into a bag and take more samples from about 20 different places around the farm where the crops are grown. This should be done in a zigzag pattern. Label the bag with your name, telephone number, size of the farm and what you want to grow. Then, take it to the Soil Cares mobile lab. So Timoth, how long is it going to take before you get the results? Two hours. Uh-huh. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have the results. Coming up, we get the results from Lillian's soil test. Will we be able to help her fight the new castle diseases in her chickens? Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are still in Lake Itatu Village, Meru District in Arusha, Tanzania. Where we are still shaping up Lillian's Shamba. And now we have results from the soil test. I'm sure she's eagerly waiting for them. So let's go give her the results. From the soil test results, Lillian's soil has very low nitrogen and potassium. And the phosphorus was adequate. Plants need nitrogen for growth, root formation, and flowering. Potassium is required in large amounts for proper growth and reproduction of plants. So, to help sort Lillian's soil problem, she was advised to use mere fertilizer NPK 171717 for planting and then top press with a urea fertilizer of NPK 4600.
Lillian is trying to build a successful chicken enterprise. One of her major problems is that her chickens get diseases and die. This is not good for her business or her income. Mr. Ngowi, a vet, has come to give us some advice on disease control. So Lillian, what are the main problems with your chickens? My problems with the chicken is Newcastle and their eyes are swollen. Mr. Joey, what is Newcastle disease? Uh, Newcastle disease is, uh, is a viral disease, but it's a very fatal disease which can kill a lot of birds at the same time. So it's a big problem in Tanzania and in most of the other African countries. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms of Newcastle disease? The, the animals just die one or two and the production drops very fast. Mm -hmm. But the other clinical signs which you ca uh, can be noted in general uh, is that the, the animals will lose weight, they will not eat. Suddenly they will have difficulty in uh, and getting air through, the respiratory system is affected. Other signs are trembling. Sometimes the neck is twisted and the legs, they become paralyzed and incoordination comes in. So you've got a mix of respiratory signs. Neural system is affected. How does a farmer prevent his chickens from getting the Newcastle disease? Newcastle disease can be easily prevented by using vaccine. The vaccines are available, but for small farmers like Lillian here, uh, we have got the thermostable vaccine, which does not need uh, a lot of uh, cold chain facility. And they can be purchased from a veterinary shops in town. What is the packaging of that vaccine? How many doses? A pack is enough for 400 beds. Now, if a farmer like Lillian here vaccinates her chickens, is, is, it, is it also good to for the, for the neighbors to vaccinate their chickens too? It is good for all the people who are keeping beds to vaccinate because a disease can act, uh, uh, occur in other people's farm and it will affect you. But if all the neighbors have vaccinated the animals, it means the immune status of the beds around, surrounding Lillian and his neighbors, the immune st status will be high. A farmer like Lillian can buy the vaccine in town, uh, bring it in and it's just a drop, you just catch the bird and you just put a drop on, on the eye. One eye, one drop. That's enough. I think now we are ready to vaccinate. Lillian, let's go and vaccinate. Okay. You should give one drop in each chicken's eye and wait for the bird to blink the vaccine into its eye. Vaccinate all your birds at least once every three months and vaccinate chicks when they are 14 to 18 days old and repeat after 28 to 32 days. Lillian has four children. It is very important that they get the right type of food so that their brains and bodies can grow well. She has some of the right ingredients for a good diet already, like milk, fish, eggs, chicken and rice. But we ask Alice to visit to shape up her nutrition. Alice, we've invited you here today to talk to us about nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, you've walked around Lillian's chamber. Mm -hmm. Do you think she has enough vegetables? No, she doesn't have vegetable plots here at home and she doesn't have the fruits. Mm -hmm. So she's on the risk of getting diseases because she lacks vitamins which are coming from the vegetables. So how important is nutrition? Nutrition helps us in the growth physically and mentally. And specifically the vitamins, they help us to protect our bodies against the diseases. So when Lillian have the, uh, have the vitamins, she can be help her and the family to have minerals, and vitamins to protect the bodies, mm -hmm. so the house cannot be attacked with the diseases. Uh -huh. yeah. So when Lillian was telling us that she has vegetables but not here, mm -hmm. a little bit far away, mm -hmm. so how can you help or what can she do? Lillian what can do, she can establish a home garden 
just around the home. The home garden helps to have easily accessibility of the vegetables at home. Right. And it is easy to make it and it doesn't use a lot of water to watering it and it is manageable. Right. And it takes just a, a little space, not a, that big one. Yes. Yeah, but you get a lot of vegetables. What about like fruits? She can use the moringa seeds to plant mm -hmm. because the moringa has a lot of nutrients needed by human bodies. Uh -huh. Yes. Show me how to make this kitchen garden. Yes, I can. We can just go now and do it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Thank you. So when you want to make a kitchen garden, you draw a big circle with a big diameter of 240 centimeters. You will leave an entrance of about 120 centimeters in the shape of a V. After you have made your circle, we now arrange stones around it like a wall along its circumference of a height of 50 centimeters. And then we fill our garden up with soil. Once the soil is enough to our requirement, we mulch it up and make planting holes for our vegetables. We plant our vegetables 20 centimeters apart and in a zigzag pattern in a triangular shape. We've learned so much from this shamba. And with all the expert advice she's gotten, Lillian now is truly shaped up. Lillian has learned so much today. We hope when we come back, her chickens will be free from disease and her rice yield will have tremendously increased. Naomi, I think we have learned so much on this shamba. And with all the expert advice Lillian's got, she is truly shaped up. <laughs> We've covered so much and if you are like me, you may not remember it all. Weather, diseases, new crops, type of crops, cows, goats, chickens, markets. And so much more. Shamba Shape Up has a service to help you, so you don't have to remember everything. It is called the Ice Shamba and it can send information to help you know what to do on your farm and when to plant. You can even call and talk to an expert if you get really stuck. Just send an SMS with the word JOIN to 21606. And you can shape yourself up anytime and anywhere. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shepa, or simply text 30606.